A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News update for Thursday, July 22nd. The way is clear for Akani McDowell to seek a third term as president of the National Union of Public Workers. High Court Justice Cecile McCarthy gave the nod of approval as he handed down his ruling on the matter today. The elections must now be held within 21 days. Our Emmanuel Joseph has the full story. The High Court also ordered that the union must extend the period for McDowell to submit his candidacy for president or any other elected post to on or before July 29th. McDowell, whose suspension on the eve of nomination day of June 24th as a member and president, prevented him from contesting the poll schedule for July 15th. He was granted an interim injunction to postpone the election when he appeared before Justice McCarthy last week seeking the order. The court had reserved until Thursday its ruling on the broader issues such as McDowell's participation in the election, the allocation of time for him to recoup lost ground for campaigning, and the union's withdrawal of a memorandum suspending him as a member and the president. However, on Thursday, the judge did not interfere with the union's decision to suspend the embattled leader, but instead ordered the reinstatement of him only as a member to allow him to vote and run. Justice McCarthy was also careful to insist that the order handed down by the court must not lead other members who have not already been nominated to offer themselves as candidates. The judge also took time out to make some strong comments and observations regarding certain actions of the National Council, the second highest decision-making organ within the NUPW, particularly related to McDowell's suspension and his inability to participate in the poll. He said if it is that a national council could suspend a member without hearing that member and it prevents that member from contesting an election, what is to stop future national councils from doing the same to people who they did not like? In response, McDowell said he felt vindicated. After this morning's ruling, I feel vindicated. It was the only outcome that made sense in terms of what is fair and the kind of precedent the union should avoid. I trust that no one else will have to go through this test. And, and as it relates to the presidency, this paves the way for the members ultimately to decide what they want. And I'm quite happy with that. In other news, play between the West Indies and Australia was suspended even before the first ball was bowled in today's one-day international match at Kensington Oval, after a single case of COVID-19 was confirmed. Cricket West Indies CEO Johnny Grave revealed that it was a non-playing member of the West Indies staff who tested positive, and in keeping with the protocols, all players will be isolated and tested. Uh, that was confirmed today by a non-playing member of the West Indies staff. Um, this decision was taken after the toss uh, at Kensington Oval once the result was known and confirmed by the Ministry of Health officials. Uh, the established COVID-19 protocols stipulate now that all members of both teams, the match officials and all the TV crew will return immediately to the team hotel. Uh, everyone will be retested later today. Um, in the meantime, everyone will have to remain in isolation in their rooms until those PCR test results are confirmed. Uh, we'll make a further decision when the match uh, can be replayed at a later date once all the test results are back. All's not well in the Barbados Association of Vendors, Retailers and Entrepreneurs, Barvin. Today, 40 members of the group held a press conference to voice their grievances with the executive. Spokesperson Camille Short said they are fed up with a hike in subscription fees and the allocation of vending spaces, among other things. She says they are upset with the executive that they have failed to address their concerns while they are suffering losses. When we buy, say, a quarter case of carrots, right? We buy a quarter case of carrots, 12 packs of carrots at $2.50. When we sell, we have to sell them at three fifty. That's only one dollar profit, and that's twelve dollars that we would make on a, on a quarter bag of carrots. To have to take fifty dollars or twenty five dollars out of your money, a jump that is so high over so many years, it can't it can't happen because people would not be able to afford. And that is why a lot of these members also are moving out there, not because they did not have a space, but because the fees are so absorbent, you cannot afford to pay them. Stewart declared the members intend to return to the old temporary market at Cheatside to play their trade from Saturday. Saturday, we all plan to come back in here and sell. Because funny enough, we were the members that the members of the the vendors, which would have been displaced in the um, van stand. We're, bar we're, we're barman members that were in title spaces down at the Macy Grinder Highway. 
So because we don't have any place else to go and sell, we said, okay, well, we have to come back in here because if he's not going to offer us a space, we have no choice. In other news this Thursday, Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Ryan Strong, says the National Vaccination Fund has raised some 10.8 million, 7.3 million of which has been transferred to the Consolidated Fund to help with COVID-19 measures. He made the disclosure while accepting a donation of 89,000 from the Barbados Cooperative and Credit Union League. As of yesterday, um, the vaccine fund, the balance on the account was, was just over 4 million, but we have raised 10.7 million since we opened the fund this year. We transferred 7.7 .7 into the consolidated fund, obviously to help finance um, some of these operations. Um, there's a balance of just over four million on the account at the moment, but we have raised seven, ten point seven million dollars to date as it relates to the to the vaccine fund. And as we move forward, obviously, the more vaccine that we can acquire, it means that all Barbadians will be able to avail themselves of that of that vaccine. Health and Wellness Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick is concerned about the slow uptake of the Seraphon vaccine by citizens. He says his ministry will have to do more sensitization to the public about the vaccine that was donated by China last month. We need to do a lot more public awareness and public education in relation to Sinopharm. The media would have done some work in relation to AstraZeneca and the others in the early days. We have to do a similar thing for Sinopharm. In today's COVID-19 update, the Best Dos Santos Public Health Laboratory confirmed 17 new cases, 7 females and 10 males from 1,336 tests on Wednesday. There are 173 people in isolation. Overall, there are 4,319 cases. 48 people have succumbed to the virus. Under the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19, 98,592 first doses of the vaccine have been administered. To date, 73,814 people, or 27.2% of the population, have received second doses and are fully vaccinated. There's regional and international news after this short break. No news now, the people of Tobago could return to the polls soon. This follows the announcement that the process to have the Tobago House of Assembly Act proclaimed was completed today. We now get details from TCT News. And according to Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, elections could be called before the end of the year. The EBC begins producing a report for the creation of 15 seats in Tobago for submission to the relevant minister, in this case, the Minister for Local Government. The report of the EBC must be completed within 90 days of the proclamation. It doesn't mean it will be 90 days, but it must be concluded within a 90-day period. A simple majority is required to have the amendment passed. Once the report is done by the EBC, at the pleasure of the EBC, and they submit that report to the, to the uh, relevant minister, takes it to the parliament, and there has to be a debate on it in parliament. That debate will end with a resolution in the House to complete it. The report of the EBC usually is accepted without mores. The order for 15 seats will be made by the President and be published in the Gazette. Dr. Rowley stressed with the current situation, the Chief Secretary is unable to dissolve the Tobago House of Assembly, so the law would be used to have this done once all procedures are completed. International Front, a new study shows that two doses of Pfizer or the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines are nearly as effective against the highly transmissible Delta coronavirus variant as they are against the dominant Alpha variant. A new study out Wednesday found that two doses of Pfizer and AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccines offer strong protection against the Delta variant, almost as much as the previously dominant Alpha strain. 
Based on real-world data, the New England Journal of Medicine study confirms Public Health England's earlier findings about the efficacy of Pfizer and AstraZeneca's vaccines. Wednesday's study found that two doses of Pfizer's shot were about 88 percent effective at preventing symptomatic disease from the Delta variant, compared to 93.7 percent against the Alpha variant. Meanwhile, two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine were 67 percent effective against Delta and 74.5 percent effective against Alpha. Data from Israel, which has one of the highest vaccination rates in the world, had estimated Pfizer's effectiveness against symptomatic disease to be even lower, but suggests protection against severe disease remains high. Officials say vaccines are highly effective against Delta, now the dominant variant worldwide, but the study reiterates that just one dose of the vaccines is not enough for high protection. Public Health England had previously said that a first dose of either vaccine was around 33 percent effective against symptomatic disease from the Delta variant. Wednesday's study found that one dose of Pfizer's shot was 36 percent effective, while one dose of AstraZeneca was around 30 percent effective. That's news, but for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.